what I'm gonna make on the side tonight when we have our coffee rubbed London broiler. I thought, well, I, I put some corn on the cob in my pressure cooker and uh, that's done. And I was gonna make a tomato and cucumber salad, but I also had a loaf of French bread and I thought, ooh, I'm gonna make bruschetta. So, or bruschetta, or however you wanna say it, bruschetta, bruschetta, it doesn't matter. What it is basically is a tomato salad with olive oil, tomato, onions, garlic, and fresh basil, salt and pepper, some black olives, and um, I've toasted off some French bread here, and I'm probably going to... Um, no mozzarella? There's no cheese in bruschetta. Oh. There may be cheese on crostini, but not on bruschetta. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull my toast out of the toaster oven. And while it's still warm, you wanna do this while it's still warm. And I, I didn't get much of a, you know, a brown on here. But you I have- say, if they've never heard the toast song, they should look it up. Oh yeah. What I have here is a cut clove of garlic, and I'm simply rubbing this on my toasted bread while it is still hot. And I have asbestos fingers, so that would be why I can do this. And it smells so good. And when you run out of garlic, just grab yourself another clove and start doing it again. This is gonna season the bread and make it extra delicious. And it wants to try and get away from me. I have a resistant garlic. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Okay. Now. I'm going to set this off to the side. And show you what I've done. I have about four medium sized tomatoes in here three red tomatoes and one yellow lemon boy tomato. The red tomatoes are organic off the vine tomatoes that I bought in my farmer's market that needed to be used because I had them in the fridge because I bought them last week and none of my tomatoes were ripe. But I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna get this basket because I went out into the garden to pick some basil. This is my basil. For this dish. And I didn't take a basket with me and I should have. Look. Look at these stinking tomatoes. These are the lemon boys, okay? That, I picked that one yesterday. This is a Cherokee purple. I picked that one tonight. Okay, look. Look. That's almost as big as Mike is here. It almost is. Look at this one. That's like three tomatoes that grew together. It's like incredible. Now this one does have a little blossom end rot, but you can cut that right out and eat it. It's not gonna, you know. Look at these, they're absolutely gorgeous. I never grew lemon boys before until this year. And I'll tell you what, I'm gonna continue growing these because mm -hmm. they're incredible. They're a low acid tomato and they're very, very sweet. And I have jalapeno peppers coming out my ears. So I'm gonna be doing, probably next weekend, I'm gonna be doing my uh, candied jalapeno recipe that I previously tried and it's absolutely amazing. Anyway, back to this. Chopped tomatoes. A little chopped garlic. Oh, what the hell. <laughs> Put it all in there. A half of a medium sized onion that you have diced. This is the rest of the onion. Okay. Stick that over here. Now, this is a lovely salad all by itself. You don't have to have the bread, but I'll tell you what, when you're done with this, you're just totally going to fall in love. All right. Basil. How do you deal with basil? Well, you pick it, you bring it in the house, you're going to pull off the stem, just like this. And these leaves aren't very large, but that's all right. Um, this is the Genovese, I believe. I only planted one kind this year. I've, in years past, I've planted three or four kinds of basil. I've done Spicy Thai, I've done Tiny Tim, I've done Genovese, I've done so many different kinds. And I'm not gonna put a whole lot of basil because 
It's not Rick's very favorite, but you've got to have basil if you're going to have bruschetta. Okay, so did you see what I did? I stacked those leaves up and then I rolled them up like a cigar. And then what you get is what you would call in culinary school a chiffonade. Ho, ho, ho. Okay? In the bowl. Beckin bowl? Beckin bowl. All right. Anyone who can tell me what movie that comes from will win a prize. Not really. But you'll have the pride of knowing that you got the answer right. Okay, now what do we do? So that was our favorite movie before we found out that was each other's favorite movie. A couple of glugs of good quality extra virgin olive oil. Tomatoes love salt, so you know what's coming next. Whoopsie. About a half a teaspoon. Over my left shoulder was the rest of it. I already ground up some and on to Telly. Black pepper. Telly doesn't mind. Nope. All right. The rest of this basil, what you're going to do is you're going to roll it up in a moist paper towel and you're going to stick it in a Ziploc bag in your fridge. And that will stay fresh for a few days and you'll be able to use it for whatever you like. There is one more component that we're going to stick in the bowl. And that is some chopped black olive. Now you can choose to get uh, brined Kalamata olives at your olive bar. But I have some chopped olives in my cabinet. And um, let's see. I'm gonna, they're sliced olives, so I'm gonna give these a little more of a chop. I'm just gonna run my knife through them. It doesn't have to be perfect. They don't all have to be the same size. They just have to be smaller than they were when they came out of the can. This is cooking. It's not rocket science. It should be something that you love. It should not be something that stresses you out. I probably put a couple tablespoons of chopped olive in there. Now let me show you these olives. I just came across these. They're called Lindsay Naturals. And all that's in here is olives, water, and sea salt. Now, I'm probably not real keen on the sea salt, but there's no chemicals in here. And that is why these olives look a little on the greenish side. Because the other olives, unbeknownst to me, have a chemical in them that keeps them black. So why do we need that? We probably don't. So I'm not using it. Okay. Okay. So, now what we do is we taste. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Mm. Here, babe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so That's pretty good. now we get another spoon because someone will yell at me if I put that spoon back in the bowl, even though I'm not inviting them to dinner. All right, I'm only going to do one. I'm going to take the smallest piece of bread. I don't care if I get your cooties. You already have my cooties. And when everyone serves themselves, they can take a piece of bread and they can put a little of the bruschetta topping right on top. Just like that. And that is how you eat it. And it's yummy. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and that bread is going to absorb all this lovely olive oil and tomato juice and all these seasonings and the herbs and the olives and it's just delicious. So, there you have it. That's how I make quick bruschetta. You can use a little uh, ciabatta bread, you can use a little, I usually use um, a baguette that I have sliced. But I had French bread on hand tonight so that's what we're having. Use what you got and enjoy. But always make sure you toast the bread and rub it with a little cold garlic clove because it makes the world of difference. So I hope you try it. I hope you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya.